Hello there, you're watching News at 6 on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrives in Abu Dhabi. Talks on trade, energy and security issues to be the focus of his two-day visit to the UAE. India summons Pakistani High Commissioner Abdul Basit over fresh ceasefire violations in Kashmir. Six people killed in shelling along the line of control. Home Minister of Punjab's uh, province uh, in Pakistan, among the 13 killed in suicide blast, Minister Shuza Khanzada was active in many major operations against terrorists. And disappointment for Saina Nehwal in the World Badminton Championships, Indonesia settles for silver after losing to title holder Carolina Marin. Our top story, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today began his uh, two-day visit to the UAE ahead of his talks with the Emirati leadership. Modi has said that the Gulf region is vital for India's economic, energy and security interests. Now, he aims to improve trade and investment ties between the two nations during his visit. This is the first time an Indian Prime Minister has landed in UAE on a bilateral visit in the last three decades. During his two-day visit, Modi will reach out to investors to hard sell India as an attractive business destination. Ahead of his visit, Modi said he is keen to foster a strategic partnership, particularly in the security, energy and investment sectors. The fact that after such a long gap the Prime Minister is coming adds a lot of significance to this visit. What can be discussed? Well, bilateral issues. Uh, we have a lot already happening bilaterally between India and UAE. Uh, as you know, we, uh, UAE and India are one of the largest uh, trading partners of each other. During the visit, Modi is scheduled to meet his counterpart Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, apart from the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, who invited Modi to visit the country. Modi will seek to enhance cooperation in energy and trade. At $60 billion per year, UAE is placed third on the list of India's trade with foreign countries. UAE is also very important from the investment point of view. Their sovereign wealth fund has uh, reserves of more than $800 billion and we would like to interest them to in invest in our infrastructure sector. From the energy point of view also, UAE is a very important supplier of oil to us and we would like to secure long-term uh, supplies in this regard. Security is another potential area of cooperation between the countries. The leaders are expected to discuss ways to enhance cooperation in this sector, especially in combating terrorism. UAE's concern over the spread of Islamic State in the region is also expected to feature in talks. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the Prime Minister will also address the huge Indian diaspora in the UAE. Ahead of his visit, Modi described the Gulf country as a mini-India, which has close to 2.6 million Indians as citizens. He said that Indian community was not only contributing to the progress and development of the host country, but also participating in the economic development of India. The Indian diaspora is prepared to welcome the first Indian Prime Minister on UAE soil after Indira Gandhi way back in 1981. UAE nationals, big business people, uh, uh, Prime Minister invest kare kyunki india ek bada economic power hai aur hone wala hai aur already ho chuka hai i mean uh, almost told we are in the in the process to uske liye hum log ko sab bahut acha expectation hai aur hum log ko khush hai khushi hai ki hamara honorable prime minister idhar visit kar raha hai i'm really excited about uh, our uh, prime minister's visit As india and uae have traditionally enjoyed uh, strong ties uh, right from the you know 13th century onwards in various trading areas so i think it's mostly it, this will open up a lot of areas for investments and uh, uh, by the nri businessmen as well as the emirati businessmen in both the country and in the other big story, in a new flare-up in border tensions, Pakistani troops resorted to heavy firing and mortar shelling at Indian posts and civilian areas. The firing have left six civilians dead, including a Sarpanch in Poonch district. Now, several others have been injured. India summoned Pakistan High Commissioner Abdul Basit after 35 ceasefire violations in this month alone. 
For nearly 24 hours since the Independence Day, Pakistani mortar shells and guns have targeted the Balakot region in Punch. The outposts and the civilian areas have been on target in the heaviest firing from across the line of control in recent times. The toll, six dead and ten injured, all of them local villagers. Among the dead was a 12-year-old boy and a 40-year-old woman. दो दिन से अब बहुत फायरिंग चल रहा है सर हमारे पांच आदमी जो है वो अभी तक मर चुके हैं उनका कोई दफने बनाने का स्कीम नहीं है यहाँ पे कोई फैसिलिटी अवेलेबल नहीं है फायरिंग जो है पिछले कुछ दिनों से चल रही थी रुक रुक के फायरिंग होती थी बट हैबिटेशंस पे फायरिंग नहीं होती थी कल दिन को जो है वो हैबिटेशन पे फायरिंग हुई रात को भी कुछ थोड़ी फायरिंग हुई मॉर्निंग में हुई संडे वॉज द एथ कंजेक्यूटिव डे ऑफ फायरिंग बाय द पाकिस्तानी ट्रूप्स ऑन इंडियन पोस्ट एंड सिविल इन एरियाज Till Saturday, there have been 35 ceasefire violations. Last month saw 19 more, in which four people were killed and 14 others were injured. Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mufti Muhammad Saeed raised concerns over the ceasefire violations and loss of lives. He urged for immediate de-escalation of tension along the borders in Jammu and Kashmir. India summoned Pakistan High Commissioner Abdul Basit to lodge strong protest. He sought effective mechanism to stop violence. We are concerned about ceasefire violations. Our side would like to have a more effective uh, mechan mechanism in place as to determine as to who indulges in these unprovoked firing. Meanwhile, the villagers living near the LOC are keen to move out amid heavy firing. Schools and shops have been shut for the past few days since the firing escalated. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the ceasefire violations come days before the NSAs of the two nations are set to meet in Delhi. Ajit Doval and Sartaj Aziz will hold uh, talks for the first time on 23rd of August. Well, during the talks, India is expected to present uh, strong evidence of terrorism emanating from Pakistan, highlighted further by recent attacks in Gurdaspur and also near Udhampur. However, opposition parties have raised questions whether the meeting will be fruitful under the present circumstances. Government of India must immediately, immediately call off the NSA level talks. There should be no contact with Pakistan till the time this brutality, this outrage, does not cease. Yesterday we celebrated uh, the independence of our nation. Day before Pakistan celebrated uh, its uh, independence, and uh, both the leaders have. Uh, Uh, made uh, exchange of uh, pleasantries, good wishes. Uh, in this background, uh, the violation of ceasefire is uh, really condemnable, and uh, Pakistan, uh, the government of Pakistan, should ensure its armed violent ceasefire agreement. And news from Madhya Pradesh now. Well, the BJP today swept the civic body elections in the state. The party gained eight bodies from the Congress, so which was left with just one municipal council. It now holds all 16 municipal corporations in the state. An elated Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said that the results are a fitting blow to the party's rivals, who try to defame it with the Vyapam allegations. The Congress had repeatedly demanded Singh's resignation over the jobs and admission examination. स्कैम लेकिन अब सब जगह भारतीय जनता पार्टी शानदार सफलता प्राप्त कर रही है जनता को बहुत जनता का बहुत बहुत आभार धन्यवाद और बेहतर काम करने का हम प्रयास करेंगे लेकिन साथ में वो लोग भी सबक सीखें जिन्होंने प्रदेश को बदनाम करने की साजिश रखी इस व्यापम घोटाले में आरोपित होने के बाद मुख्यमंत्री जी के लिए यह चुनाव जिंदगी और मौत का प्रश्न था और वो इन चुनावों के लिए आम दाम दंड भेद नौकरशाही का पूरा दुरुपयोग धन का दुरुपयोग बल का उपयोग करेंगे और वो उन्होंने किया है मगर बावजूद इसके हम लोग भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ सरकार के खिलाफ अपनी आवाज को और तेज करेंगे एंड लेट्स गेट यू मोर न्यूज एंड अपडेट्स फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द नेशन इन नेशन वाइड Servicemen escalated their protests over the implementation of one rank, one pension at a Jantar Mandar by going on an indefinite hunger strike today. The veteran soldiers were hoping that Prime Minister Narendra Modi would announce uh, the scheme in his Independence Day speech yesterday.
At least uh, six people died and uh, ten others took seriously ill last night after consuming illicit liquor in West Bengal's South Parganas district. It was the, the second such incident in the district after the 2011 huge tragedy that claimed more than 170 lives. The first batch of the 340 pilgrims left from New Delhi for the annual Hajj pilgrimage in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The batch was flagged off by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and Junior Foreign Minister General V.K. Singh. The pilgrims thanked the Delhi authorities for the arrangements. The food gig grain production is estimated to go down by 5.25% at this fiscal. All eyes are now on the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sanchai Yojana, which is expected to overcome the adverse effects of a deficit a monsoon and unseasonal rains of February to March this year. India's agriculture is in a bad shape. Area under cultivation has fallen and so has food grain and oil seed production. Currently, 142 million hectares are cultivated. Of this, only 45% farmland gets irrigation resources. In an attempt to reverse the trend, the government will spend 50,000 crore over the next five years under the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana. That will bring 6 lakh hectares under irrigation. 5 lakh more hectares will benefit from drip irrigation. Moreover, 1,300 watershed projects are marked for completion. सबसे बड़ी बात है कि जो कृषि उत्पादन में जब भी देश में कभी कभी ये सूखे के कारण आई है तो इस वर्ष एक बहुत बड़ी योजना प्रधानमंत्री कृषि सिंचाई योजना की शुरुआत हुई है 50,000 करोड़ का उसका बजट है जो उत्पादकता बढ़ाने में सहायक होगी During 2014-15 delayed rainfall in monsoon season affected kharif production while untimely rains in February and March 2015 impacted rabi production Overall food grain production declined to 251.12 million tons in 2014-15 from a record level of 265.04 million tons in 2013-14. Wheat production estimated at 90.78 million tons was lower by 5.07 million tons achieved during 2013-14. Pulses estimated at 17.38 million tons is lower by 1.87 million tons. The ideal situation that we should, or the utopian situation that we would, should have is that we should have enough for our, buff, our people, number one. Number two, enough for our buffer stock. Number three, we should export to the countries that need it. And it should be a revenue earner for us. National Sample Survey Organization ke mutabik, 3,078 rupay per month ek kisan ki amandani hai, jabki bank ke fourth class employee ki jo salary hai, wo 42,000 rupay per month hai, to kirshi has become an economic, aur ab koi bhi kirshi ka kaam nahi karna chaat. Agriculture contributes only 18% of the national income, but with 50% population in rural areas depending on it, any setback triggers a disproportionate amount of human distress. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha Television. And time now to take a very short break. Up next, we'll all get to all the international news. So Sri Lanka all uh, geared up for parliamentary elections on Monday. Raj Baksa to contest in a comeback bid as the Prime Minister. We'll get to all the details. Stay with us. dating back centuries. A cultural heritage that inspires and warms at once. Magic that awes, Rajya Sabha Television brings you events that embrace the wonders of India's classical arts. Conversations with the biggest names in the culture and music. Rajya Sabha Television, Democracy at Work. Down the ages, jewellery has been the pride of the Indian culture. In the Harappan period, it attained perfection in flattened gold bands. From the Mauryan period came the exquisite gold brooches. Many ornaments were an extension of religious practices, like the Gauri Shankaram Rudraksh necklace worn by the temple priest. 
rings with lids preserve the tavis that held secret messages and sometimes even poison Welcome back after the break. Now, at least 68 Indians were taken into custody at a detention center near Seattle in the U.S. state of Washington for allegedly crossing into the country illegally. While uh, their arrest dates vary, about half of them were detained in the last one month. They were trying to sneak illegally in, uh, up from across the border. Most of these Indians hail from Punjab. However, it could take months before a decision is taken on whether they will be deported or allowed to stay in the country. And the Home Minister of Pakistan's Punjab province, uh, Shuza Khan Zada, was killed after a powerful blast blew up his office in uh, Shadi Khan village near Atok. The blast brought down the roof of the building and killed at least 13 people. Around 20 to 25 people, including the minister, were present inside the building at the time of the blast. Now, all of them were buried under the rebel Pakistani authorities said that the minister was receiving threats uh, from the Sunni militant group Lashkare Jangvi. Khan Zada was uh, given charge of the Home Department in October 2014 and uh, he was uh, actively involved in major operations against terror outfits. And Sri Lanka is all set to vote in a crucial general elections tomorrow. The election promises a close battle between Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh's UNP and President Maitri Pala Sirisena's UPFA. Now, Mahinda Rajapaksa is eyeing a political comeback as Prime Minister, that is months after being toppled as the President. Here is more. Sri Lanka goes to polls on Monday to elect the 225-member parliament. Security has been tightened for the polls after a tense political campaign. Around 15 million voters are expected to vote in Monday's elections. The key contest will be between the United National Party of Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singhe and the United People's Freedom Alliance, which is headed by President Sri Sena. This has been a free and fair election, which people have not witnessed for a long time. The younger people have not witnessed it during their lifetime. It's to preserve this freedom and to build a new country that we seek the vote on August 17th. However, the real challenge to the UNP comes from former president and Sinhala strongman Mahinda Rajpakse. He is looking for a political comeback months after being toppled as president. <laughs> Sirisena was not in favor of granting Rajpakse a party ticket, but his party allies have defied his wishes. Eventually, he had to allow Rajpakse to contest as there was a threat that the party would be split if he was not given a party ticket. Rajpakse is contesting from the provincial city of Kurunegla, where he enjoys a considerable following among the Sinhala speaking Buddhists. Bureau report, Raj Sabha TV. On all the other international stories in Global Buzz. An Indonesian plane with 54 people on board has gone missing near the Papua region. Our contact was lost with the plane after takeoff from Jayapura. A search operation has been launched to locate the missing aircraft. The officials suspect bad weather behind the disappearance of the plane. Democratic uh, presidential candidate Hillary Clinton has slammed Republican Jeb Bush's remarks that the share of blame for the rise of Islamic State rests with President Barack Obama's policies on Iraq. And Bush uh, accused the Obama administration of a premature withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq in 2011. However, Clinton chose to blame former President George Bush, who in fact launched the 2003 invasion of Iraq and also signed the agreement on troops withdrawal. The death toll and explosion in China's Tianjin province has gone up to 112. Authorities have ruled out toxins near the blast area and they say that it poses no risk to the people outside the evacuation zone. Over 700 people are still in hospitals. Several others are still missing in one of the China's worst industrial disasters. 
Ecuador President Rafael Correa has declared a state of emergency over increasing activity at the Cotopaxi volcano near the capital, Quito. Officials evacuated hundreds of people nearby villages after the volcano began to erupt on Friday. A small eruptions have already shot ash more than 5 kilometers into the sky, spreading as far as 50 kilometers to the north near the capital. Well, another short break here. Up next, we'll get to all the sports stories. Abhishek Verma has clinched gold at the Archery World Cup. That's good news. We'll uh, get to all the details. Stay with us. Tales that inspire stories of social change. A salute to diversity, promoting public discourse. Events that motivate, inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries every Friday at 10.30 p.m., Saturday 12.30 p.m. and Sunday at 1 p.m. Harappan sites are a treasure trove of sophisticated pottery. These creations show tremendous advances by the potter's wheel. Creations like the perforated jar, the copper axe, the drizzle and knives astound even present-day archaeologists. Figurines depicting yoga poses, chess pieces display a complexity unsurpassed even by later day civilizations, all of which make the Harappan civilization truly unique. Hottest topics. If you can facilitate the opening up and the expansion of the international border trade, you can add to the economy. Candid confessions. The Congress has not been able to communicate. We have to uh, revive our links with the masses. World class health care is uh, available to only a handful of people in this country. Counting controversies. A lot of leaders today think that they rule by divine right. Now, media has become manageable. Watch RSTV engage personalities to the point. Every Wednesday, 10 p.m. Thursday, 1.30 and 5.30 p.m. Welcome back. Now, heartbreak for Saina Nehwal all over again as the badminton ace had to settle for the silver at the World Badminton Championships in Jakarta today. Well, Nehwal lost in straight games to her Spanish opponent and title holder Carolina Marlin 16-21, 19-21 in 59 minutes. The Indian champion found it really tough to deal with her rival's energy and she floundered when challenged on pace. Now, Carolina capitalized on Saina's errors and some precisely placed baseline shots. Well, it is uh, the second successive loss for Saina Nehwal in the major final. She had earlier lost to Maureen uh, at the All England Championships final earlier this year. Saina lost the first set and the second Saima, Saina was leading till the end. But uh, last two strokes, that girl was time and again, time and again asking for some relaxation. And ultimately, Saina made the mistakes and uh, lost uh, uh, in two sets. But uh, she has gone to the finals. It is wonderful achievement. It is wonderful for India. She couldn't make it, but the entire country is with her. She is the first woman badminton player from India who has reached the finals of the World Cup. And uh, she has got a uh, silver medal, but at the same time, we are all with her. We expect that uh, she will come back and get the gold again. 
But some good news from archery, where Abhishek Verma displayed a brilliant form in the archery World Cup on Saturday, clinching gold medal for India. Verma won uh, the compound men's individual section, opening India's account in the World Cup. The world number 18 was at his best in the final as he held on to his uh, lead to beat Ismail Ibadi of Iran. Now, Verma had uh, 13 perfect 10 scores. With the win, the Asian Games the silver medalist avenged his defeat to Ibadi at the Incheon Games last year. Gold medal Jita, it's a very tremendous performance. From the last three years, he performed very well. In fact, he started in 2013. In 2013, the Asian Championship there were three gold medals. Asian Games में medal, इसके बाद यहाँ medal और उसकी performance में लगातार सुधार होता जा रहा है। वो ही एक ऐसा archer है पूरे world में जो continuously लेकिन slowly आगे बढ़ रहे हैं। And more sporting action in sports beat. The Indo-Swiss women's doubles pair of Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis suffered a straight set loss in the semi-finals of the Rogers Cup in Toronto today. The top seeds were completely outplayed in both sets by the French-Slovenian fourth sets of Carolina Garcia and Katerina Sreptonik. Sanya and Hingis lost the match 6-3, 6-2 in an hour. Swiss teenager Belinda Benchik uh, caused a major upset after she beat world number one Serena Williams uh, to reach the Rogers Cup final. The 18-year-old came back from a set down to beat the 21-time Grand Slam champion 3-6-7-5-6-4. This was Serena's only second defeat in 45 matches this year. Uh, Benchik uh, will play Romanian uh, second seed uh, Simona Halep in the final. Murray set up a final against world number one Novak Djokovic in the Rogers Cup uh, after beating Kini Shikori in straight sets. The British uh, top seed won 6-3, 6-0. The result means uh, the squad will return to number two for the first time since 2013. Djokovic beat unseeded Frenchman Jeremy Chardy 6-4, 6-4 in the first semi-final. The International Association of Athletics Federations will elect a new president on 19th of August. The contenders for the post are two former Olympic champions, Sebastian Coe and Sergi Bukka. The vote will be the first in IIAF's history as previous leaders were nominated and accepted. Well, that's it from me and my team in this edition of News at 6. Thanks so much for watching.